shut off. Completely shuts down, quits recording, takes everything, takes all those files, all that information, throws it into a trauma container and buries it inside of your neurology. Boom, God. Um, at T1, as it goes up, when it gets to T1, your body shuts it off. So above that, you have a blackout. Or you have blank spots in your memory. So if you have situations of, they don't have to be major traumas, but some people have traumas in relationships. Parts of that that you can't remember. It's because your body shut it off. That little loop plays only up to T1, and just constantly goes around and buries it in your neurology. If you think back, yeah. So is that why some people don't remember stuff in their childhood? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's anything that, that your system perceives as life threatening. That could be anything. When you, when you, if you have a very traumatic household, you know, it wouldn't take much and you could shut a lot of things up. That little container just goes in, only goes up to T1. That's all you're gonna remember, all right? Which is a big thing with PTSD, all right? They never knew they survived. Because the interesting thing is, at T0, one of two things will happen. Either you die or you survive. If you survive, it's gonna start recording again from T1. So you have absolutely no memory of that at all. Explains a lot of things, huh? So, how do we make that work? Okay. Think of something that, um, you know, is not particularly happy. Something you want to get rid of. Nothing big, you know, on a scale of one to ten. Something like a one or a two. Something you just really don't like, but you'd rather just get rid of it. Okay? Close your eyes, take deep breath in, and just think of it. And then when you find it. You mean an unhappy memory? Yeah. Now just go ahead and point to where you first feel it in your body. Okay. And then notice the energy that's associated with where you're pointing at. What color do you have? Okay. All right, now what I want you to do is, with your finger, just trace around that energy exactly the shape that it's in. And notice every little bit about what you're drawing out around that energy. Notice the shape, whether it's sharp, whether it's pointed, whether it's round, whether it's got weight, whether it's got a temperature. Okay. And what did you come up with? to share. What'd you come up with? What'd you come up with? What do you mean? In the shape. What, what, describe the shape. It, it wasn't like an actual shape. It was more oblong and abstract, I guess. Oblong and abstract? Well, it was more abstract. Mm -hmm. shape. All right, cool. Come on. Okay, so close your eyes again. Point to that feeling. Okay. And what color was it? Orange. Orange. Okay. Now trace around that shape. And while you're doing it, just describe what you feel, what you see. Like 
really just kind of an empty hollow type feeling. Okay. Does it have a temperature? Cool. Cool. Does it have a weight to it? Heavy. Heavy. Okay. So what I want you to do is just relax and just in your mind's eye, just sort of find the center of that. When you get there, just nod your head. And what I'd like you to do is, I want you to go all the way back to the beginning of the feeling of that energy. The first scene. Just take it back like a thread goes through um, a needle and just follow it all the way back, all the way back, all the way back. So you get all the way to the first scene or situation where it happened. When you get there, just nod your head. Okay. Um, now as you're there, looking around, look at your hands. Put your mind's eye. Are they big boy hands, little boy hands, or somewhere in between? Little boy hands. Boy hands. So about how old would you be at those little boy hands? Nine. About nine? Nine years old. Okay. And is it daytime or nighttime? Day. Daytime. Okay. And are you alone with people? People. People? Okay. Do you have shoes on or are you barefoot? Shoes. Shoes. And how to pull them? Okay, so now just look at them. Tell me what's going on. Explain to me the story of what you see what's going on when you're nine years old. Um, I'm at a, uh, kind of like a like coach pitch game. Mm-hmm. Um, <coughs> family's going through some things, mother, father, and uh, about my turn to bat. And uh, coach used to pitch to you until, until you like, Missed the ball three times, and then they put a tee up. And uh, I remember just before I hit, my father like pulled me aside, said that him and my mom were getting a divorce. And um, like, I remember like trying to hold it back before I uh, went up to bat. And I went up to bat, and like, I uh, ended up, I guess, striking out for the first time like that year. And uh, I had to bring the tee out, which I guess that was pretty embarrassing for me too. Um, but I remember that, and then I, I remember like running the bases, and I don't think I ever talked to my mom about it, but that's kind of where it ends with the T Griffin being brought out. Mm-hmm. So in the middle of the big game, that tells you they're going to get divorced. And that makes you fit. Confused? Mm-hmm. You know, definitely sad. Mm-hmm. How do they react to you at the game? Really? You know, after it was affected you, did they have a different reaction to you at the game? Um, yeah, I think he probably left. Um, he left? Left. Mm-hmm. Um, that part's kind of vague, I guess. Kind of vague. Let me ask you, if, if you could go back in time from where you are now, and you could go, you could go in and you could talk to them about it, at that game, at that time, what would you tell them to make everything better? Going back with all of your knowledge, all of your experience, everything that, that you've been through in your life, what would you tell this little guy that would make everything better right now? It's going to make everything better. Mm-hmm. You know, I, don't, I don't know about that, but you know, give them some words of encouragement. Some words of encouragement? You know, um, love them both. Mm-hmm. Um, be the best person you can be. And you know, work to, work to basically like take the good from people and leave the rest. Mm-hmm. You know, take the best qualities from everyone. And just keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Okay. That would be some good advice, wouldn't it? So let me ask you something. When you look at him right now, is he smiling? My dad? Mm. Me? Your younger self. After this, this 
this information you just gave us? A little bit, yeah. Just a little bit? Okay. So, what would you like to have more than anything else in the world? What do you think you'd like to have that would make him the absolute happiest motherfucker in the whole entire universe? What would that be? Uh, probably like a mirror to the future. A mirror to the future? Something like that. Cool, what else? I guess certainty. Certainty. Stuff for a little bit more time. <laughs> okay. Anything else? All right. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to. I want you to make a movie of this. Okay. I want you to write the movie. I want you to script it. I want you to pick the actor. I want you to make an absolute blockbuster movie and it is exactly what he wants. Okay? It's gonna be number one in the human movies. I want you to just keep building that and keep making it better. Use the knobs underneath to adjust whatever you need to do with the colors. Keep putting more actors in. Okay, make it the best movie you can possibly make it for And then I want you to sit there and watch it. Keep watching it over and over, over and over at the speed of thought, let it just keep getting faster and faster. Okay. And then it's absolutely perfect. Just so nod your head and let me know. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to imagine that movie playing like an, like an IMAX theater. Make it as big as you can possibly make it. Okay? And while you're doing that, I want you to notice all of that wonderful yellow energy that's just now jumping out from the center of your body, right there where you felt it, and just filling up the entire room. Filling it up from wall to wall, from floor to ceiling. See it starts swirling around? And as it starts swirling around, it starts swirling around that picture, that movie that you're watching up in front. Okay? What I want you to do, I want you to take out a camera and just take a picture <laughs> of that movie. And then reach out with both hands and grab hold of that picture you just took. Here you go. Filled with all of that energy all throughout that thing. And you can feel that energy just coming into your body. All right? And what I want you to do is, is open that picture up as far as you can do it. Okay? And feel all the feelings that come from that. And I want you to raise it up above your head. Okay. And I want you to pull it down through your body. All the way down. All the way through. When you get down, then lift it back up again. Put it back up over your head and pull it back down through your body. You just keep making passes through. Notice each time you do it, that whole first scene, that whole first feeling that you felt just starts to disappear. Like hot water running over an ice cube. That's it. Just keep running that picture with all of that energy through your body. Keep pulling it down from the top of your head all the way to the bottom until you can't see that picture anymore. And so you don't have that original feeling there anymore. Notice the feelings that are starting to come about. What are you feeling now? More 
more happiness or it's more happiness? Yeah. Okay. Not as bad. More okay with things. Mm -hmm. Better, ultimately. Better. I guess that's why you're smiling, huh? Yeah. Sorry, baby. Keep pulling it down. You said until the picture. Until it's gone? gone? Is it all gone? The picture, yeah. All right. Try and bring it back. Try and bring back that original feeling and notice what happens instead. What happens? I mean, I just see smaller me. I don't see a lot of the outside stuff. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of the newer stuff. Mm -hmm. Better feelings. That smaller you, is he smiling there? Yeah. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is open your eyes. And notice how the world looks now. A lot of yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, man. Thank you. Give me a hand. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it, it doesn't matter whether it's a war zone or a bedroom or a boardroom. Okay, the mechanics are always exactly the same. Um, when it comes to that. And you don't need to, you don't need to, to bring up all the pain of a trauma in doing it with this kind of process. Those processes are out there if that's what you want to do. Um, but he had a lot of information to share about his, about his situation, okay, what happened when he was young, all right? And even though I was over here working with him and talking with him, working with him on his problem, how many of you guys took care of your own problems while you're out there listening? Uh, okay. Um, it's, it's kind of amazing, isn't it? Um, it's, everything in the system is a hologram and everything is, is a container. And as a matter of fact, now science is just coming around to the fact of coming out and saying that the entire universe is based on the holographic design. Okay. So, um, NLP basically went about this in a different way in that they took a look at the brick and mortar parts of it, okay? Um, they did the, the, the digital, the old factory, you know, the little brick and mortar pieces to attack and go over the house. Brent's approach, which I don't know if anyone mentioned the name of it, came up with this, Brent Bound who was the originator of um, holographic um, memory resolution, all right? His approach was a... Uh,